I was in Hollywood later that year hanging out at Group One Productions. And one day, Jack Talander, the executive producer, got a call from Neil Diamond's manager. Neil was doing a concert in uh, Portland, Oregon that Friday, and uh, he wanted to see if Jack could get a film crew up there. So Jack, of course, said yes, and he gets off the phone and says, do you want to be production manager? Well, of course, my answer was yes, even though I had no idea what I was getting into. So Jack gave me a list of names, and I got on the phone. In an hour and a half or so, we had a crew. Jack rounded up the equipment. Group One's gear was all in Austria or France made the plane reservations and so forth. On Friday morning, we all left for Portland. I met the crew when we were at the airport. The first thing I told them all was that I was a total neophyte and knew nothing whatsoever about production and would like them to teach me as we went along. We got to the auditorium in the early afternoon. Jack set up the three camera positions and the gaffer, electrician, uh, rigged a slating system that I was to operate. I learned that whenever a new film roll was loaded into each camera, it needed to be slated with proper identification in which I was given a crash course and a clapstick for sound synchronization. This was all done in the calm and quiet of an empty auditorium and seemed simple enough. Neil came in for a sound check, which took an hour or so, and we practiced the slating technique for my benefit and broke for dinner. What a different scene it was when a raucous audience had filled the place and we were working in the dark. For me, it was total confusion and chaos, but somehow I got through the concert without screwing up. By the time it was over, I was utterly exhausted. The nervous tension under which I had been operating had drained my energy completely. I had survived my baptism of fire. Playing the role of Luther Billis in a Boston production of South Pacific for six weeks appropriately bookended my acting career and was my last performance on the stage. In early April of 1973, Bob Collins, who was my oldest friend and the founder of the aforementioned Group One Productions, was hired by Carol King's manager to uh, produce and direct the shooting of her um, Central Park concert that was going to happen in early May. And he asked me to be production manager. And again, of course, I said, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> this time I really was in over my head. Now I had to learn about the New York unions, the International Alliance of Theatrical and Stage Employees and blah, blah, I can't remember, it's a very long title, it's called the IA. Uh, was the union that handled film crews. Bob was a member of the cameraman's local in Los Angeles, and so I called up the local in New York and told them what we were up to. They sent me a gaffer and a key grip. I met uh, Milty and, uh, and Hugo the day that we had our first production meeting, about a week before the shoot. Uh, they were a couple of really great guys, and I told them, just like I had told the crew in uh, the, uh, the Neil Diamond shoot, that. I had no idea what I was doing, and I needed them to coach me and teach me as we went along, which they did. I was very lucky. These were a couple of really good guys, and they kept me out of trouble. Without them, I never would have been able to get through this production without making a fool of myself. So we ended up with 12 cameras and a crew of a mix of the IA plus the Stagehands Union. This job, with a crew of 100 and a crowd of 400,000, completely dwarfed all the other jobs I'd done combined. And there was a kind of um, residual euphoria that lasted about a week. But I had to figure out a way to get some work in New York City. All my contacts were on the West Coast. I did know one New York guy who could help me out. Tony Tamborelli, the head of the camera department at Camera Service Center, had arranged all the equipment for the Central Park shoot, and we had gotten very friendly. So he recommended me to a guy who was the executive producer of one of the TV commercial production houses in New York. We had a nice meeting and he couldn't offer me any job but an entry level position, which was production assistant. So I took it, knowing that I would soon make myself valuable and, uh, and move up. Six years later, after scores of producing jobs, um, big and small, I was uh, finally accepted into the Directors Guild of America as a first assistant director. There's no time to tell you about all the other stars I worked with, not to mention the last 30 years, which include almost all of my directing and definitely all of my editing. These stories and all the productions my producer Eric Brown and I did together are in my memoirs. So while I never intended to go into show business, it seems that show business got into me. And I've enjoyed almost every minute of it. Okay. I think that's a wrap.